All right, hello and welcome back to another, this time very quick video. A question I get quite a bit is what window manager or desktop environment are you using? So let's answer this today and also look into the question of why are people using tiling window managers? Because I think it ties in quite nicely with a previous video I did on the psychology of keyboard shortcuts. And we use NeoVim as an example for not only optimizing something for speed, but optimizing your keyboard shortcuts to reduce the mental load of these tasks around your actual task so you can focus on what is really important. So let's extend this idea to managing Windows. Um, and I'm of course on the Linux distribution, I'm on PopOS, which I quite like because they provide this tiling out of the box. Another popular tiling window manager people use is called i3. It is uh, a lot older, but also still being maintained. But I prefer Pop OS, especially for getting into it. It is a lot easier to just set up and roll with it, but it has enough customization that you don't get tired of it. And furthermore, the tiling in the Pop shell is just built on top of GNOME, so other GNOME extensions also work. For example, I have an extension up here that allows me to go through my workspaces and also give numbers to those. I like show these numbers. And this extension is called Spacebar. Also quickly worth noting, Pop OS is currently working on building their own window manager and desktop environment from scratch called Cosmic. But this is not quite ready yet as of the time of this recording. But when this lands in Pop OS, I will also use it, of course. Now, what do I even mean by tiling window manager? It just means I open a window by default, just opens full screen. I'm not, I'm not wasting any screen space. If I open a terminal, in this case, with my shortcut super T, it just opens it and tiles the space so I'm not wasting any. I just close those. And I, for example, have a keyboard shortcut to open my browser, super B, same for opening terminals, all that kind of stuff. And then I'm making heavy use of workspaces. For example, I always have something related to communication on my first work workspace. I have a browser on my second, and I have a terminal on my third. And that means when I'm switching between contexts, I don't have to think about, okay, now I need to look for my windows. Um, where is my browser going? No, I just no, I just press this key and I'm back on my browser. In my case, this is a bit more customized because I'm also using a custom keyboard with a custom keyboard layout. For example, I quite like home row mods, which means I have the normal keys on my home row, like ASDF, but if I hold one of these keys, it does an alternate function. And that means I don't need to move my hands from my home row to navigate, for example. I can hold down the F key, which then functions as the super key, and press Vim key bindings to move around my windows, which is incredibly handy, but of course not something that everybody needs. You can do just fine using a normal keyboard. That another small customization I did to, up to the pop shell experience, and that is adding custom key bindings, which are not there for default, for moving to the first, second, third workspace. And I have bound those, of course, also on my keyboard so that I don't even need to press a dedicated combination. I just hold down the number key and it gets me to workspace one, two, and three. Of course, there's always some kind of overhead to learning these keyboard shortcuts. But in the end, it's a bit like learning to juggle. But once you get used to the motion, the movement is done by your body automatically and it frees you up to think about different or more things. For example, if I'm juggling three balls, I get used to it. And that means at some point I can also incorporate rotation and juggle three clubs. This is all I have for you today and I'll see you in the next one.